In this module, we would look at another application of Ijara mode of financing. But before that, let us go back and look at Ijara. What is Ijara? Ijara is actually one of the simplest contracts in Islamic law. And actually, this contract is very simple in a conventional framework as well. In its very simple form, Ijara mein hota kya hai? Ijara mein ye hota hai ke koi shak, koi cheez, kisi ko kiraye pe de deta hai. Aur kiraya wusool karta hai. And of course, okay, there are very well defined rules governing this arrangement. In an Islamic context, it is important that the use of the asset remains Sharia compliant. It is not a requirement, for example, that the lessor and the lessee should be Sharia compliant or should be even Muslim. What do I mean by that? It is possible for a Muslim to rent a house from a non Muslim. And vice versa. Is me koi kaid nahi hai ke transacting parties in case of ijara should be Muslim. Similarly, it is permissible for a Muslim owner to rent a building to a Western corporation. And vice versa, it is possible and permissible for a Muslim to rent a building from a, a non-Muslim or an un-Islamic corporation. Is me koi kadgan nahi hai ke aap a transacting party should be Muslim or Sharia company. However, the caution should be exercised when selecting uh, a party. In case of someone, if I own a property and if a bank comes to me, a conventional interest-based bank, and asks me to rent my commercial property to the bank so that the bank should have a branch in it. Because that bank is uh, an interest-based bank, the activity to be undertaken in that building is not Sharia compliant. Hence, it is not permissible for me to rent my house, my commercial property, or my land to someone who is going to do a Sharia repugnant activity over there. So this is this was the basic Ijara contract which was used centuries ago, and its usage remained constant over centuries. In the context of Islamic banking and finance, Ijara has emerged as an important Islamic mode of finance. It is not just this simple Ijara now, rather as we previously looked at, it has variants like Ijara Muntahiya Bitamlik and we have uh, uh, others like uh, Ijara uh, Wa Iqtina, which is Ijara with a component of uh, a gift in it. In case of Ijara Muntahiya Bitamli, the Ijara contract finishes with the ownership of the asset going to the lessee, and there are well defined rules and processes governing this kind of activity and this kind of mode of financing. In case of the Ijara wa Iqtina, there is a slightly different arrangement. Ijara Muntahiya Bitamlik actually becomes a basis for higher purchase mode of financing and it can be used for financing any item ranging from household goods to heavy industrial equipment and even aircraft. Now, I started with this thing that the, there are no restrictions on the contracting parties. 
and there is one restriction at least on the asset itself that its usage would should be Sharia compliant. Another restriction is that that asset itself should be Sharia compliant. What do I mean by that? Now, if someone has got a brewery which produces uh, alcohol, that brewery cannot be leased out or leased in in a Sharia framework because that asset itself is not Sharia compliant. Okay. So, in case of Ijara Muntahiya Bitamlik, all general kind of uh, assets like machinery, household items, home financing, etc., they can be uh, financed on the basis of Ijara Muntahiya Bitamlik or Ijara Wa Iktina. So, Ijara, as we previously mentioned as well, this is a very popular Sukuk structure. In case of UAE, a lot of uh, aircraft financing actually takes place with the help of Sukuk Ijara or Ijara Sukuk. Ijara wa Iktina, this is slightly different from Ijara Muntahiya Bitamlik because in this case, the leased asset actually is gifted by the lessor to the lessee at the end of the lease period. Otherwise, all other technicalities and processes of Ijara Muntahiya Bitamlik and Ijara Wa Iktina are almost the same. Let us look at Ijara Muntahiya Bitamlik with the help of a diagram. So, we have a lessee here financee, the party looking for finance and we have lessor, a financier. They have this uh, contract in case of Ijara Muntahiya Bittamlik which has uh, two aspects. It is a lease contract. This is a simple Ijara contract with the provision of two additional undertakings. One is a purchase undertaking, the other one is a sale undertaking. Sale undertaking is uh, taken by, it is undertaken by the lessor and it says, it is a one page document which says that once the lessee has uh, fulfilled all the obligations of this lease agreement, by the end of the lease period, the lessor undertakes to sell the leased asset to the lessee for a price. So, this is called a sale undertaking. A purchase undertaking is actually by the lessee. It says that during the lease period, if I happen to breach any of the terms and conditions of this lease agreement, I undertake to buy the leased asset from the lessor for a price which would be determined by the amount outstanding pursuant to this Ijara contract. So, this is what we mean by to undertake. So, at the end of the uh, lease period, when the lessee has fulfilled all the obligations of the lease agreement, i.e. it has paid the rentals and it has been a good tenant, then at the end, the lessor would sell the asset, leased asset to the lessee for a nominal price. That is called Ijara Muntahiya Bitamlik, i.e., an Ijara that ends with ownership of the lessee. In case of Ijara wa Iktina, the structure is more or less the same. However, in case of Ijara wa Iktina, the lessor promises to gift the leased asset to the lessee if the lessee has been a good tenant during the term of the Ijara agreement. So, apart from this, there are not very many major differences between Ijara Muntahiya Bitamlik and 
ijara wa iqtina the use of ijara muntahiya bi tamlik or ijara wa iqtina it depends on certain legal jurisdiction in certain legal jurisdictions it is safer to use ijara muntahiya bi tamlik rather than using ijara wa iqtina for example in case of saudi arabia ijara muntahiya bi tamlik is preferred over ijara wa iqtina because there is one sharia opinion which suggests that once someone has promised once someone has undertaken to gift something to someone else and that person has taken possession of that something then the gift would have taken place automatically to avoid that kind of situation in the jurisdictions like saudi arabia where the court decisions are made by the judges uh, or without any precedent i e if a court uh, if a case goes to a court in medina the judge over there may take a completely independent decision from someone else another judge who took a decision on a similar matter in riyadh for example so there is a lot of legal uncertainty in certain jurisdictions because of which the choice of ijara muntahiya bi tamlik or ijara wa iqtina actually reflects the risk inherent in the two structures